The Hero of Winds stands out among other links in the series. This hero wasn't chosen by the gods, he's not a descendant of the Hero of Time, the Triforce of Courage didn't rest within him. When Ganondorf began kidnapping young girls with pointed ears from across the Great Sea in his search for Princess Zelda, he stole the wrong kid's sister. The Helmorok King snatched Aral from Outset Island, but her older brother, Link, set sail to rescue her, and became wound up in a far larger quest, a fight for the fate of the world itself. While many other Links were born into their role as the hero, this Link was forced to prove his worth, to raise the sacred tower of the gods from the depths. This behemoth spire was built by the gods long ago as a trial, designed to test the courage of men against the challenges within. Link fought through the ancient structure, besting a dark nut in single combat and solving the puzzles laid before him by the divines before facing the final test, Godan. This was the ultimate trial of the gods, a monstrous machine known as the Great Arbiter but even this sacred automaton couldn't stand before the hero. Granting him passage to the top of the tower, Godan returned to his slumber, his holy task completed. The summit was a quiet place, hundreds of feet above the expanse of the ocean, where only the sound of the wind broke the silence, until Link rang the great silver bell, signalling his conquest over the divine challenge, the tower singing out his awakening as the hero of winds for the gods to hear. This tower was apparently constructed by the gods of the old world, but is there a deeper story to its origin? Just like how Godan is the guardian of the Tower of the Gods, today's video's sponsor, NordVPN, does the same for your devices connected to the internet, providing military-grade encryption for up to six devices simultaneously, hiding your IP address, browsing history, and downloads. I've been using NordVPN for a few weeks now, and the best thing about it is how you can completely forget about it. Just set it up on your phone and PC, and then you're protected whether you're at home or on public Wi-Fi. If you use my link, nordvpn.com slash Zeltic, you can grab a three-year plan for 75% off, making it $2.99 a month, and if you're not happy with your experience in the first 30 days, there's a money-back guarantee. With NordVPN, all your traffic not only moves through one remote VPN server, changing your IP address and encrypting all your data, it does this twice, meaning it's twice as secure and hides your browsing from even your internet service provider. If you want to grab NordVPN protection for less than $3 a month, head to nordvpn.com slash Zeltic or click the link in the description. The Tower of the Gods serves as the game's third main dungeon. After Link has gathered Din's Pearl from Dragon Roost Island, Faror's Pearl from Forest Haven, and Nehru's Pearl from Jaboon in a cave behind Outset Island. These pearls are placed in three goddess statues on the Triangle Islands, which cause the Tower of the Gods to rise from the dark waters of the ocean, a great pillar of smooth, alien stone. Within this tower lies a series of trials, puzzles involving the control and movement of statues, water and platforms, and enemies to defeat, but also a series of gifts, including the Command Melody and the Hero's Bow and despite its unfamiliar exterior, the interior of most of the dungeon is designed similarly to many of the underground labyrinths in the game, with ornate pillars, stonework, and gold designs. It's only when Link begins to ascend the tower that we see the alien stone design again, the walls carved with strange patterns resembling circuitry or constellations. In fact, the majority of the dungeon doesn't seem to take place in the tower itself. Much of it is only at most one floor up from sea level, until Link rises up the tower using this energy column to face Godan. But this strange constellation-like pattern on the tower is interesting because... we've seen something very similar in the series. There's another trial from the gods which uses this design, the shrines from Breath of the Wild. So, could the Tower of the Gods have been built by the Sheikah? Breath of the Wild's dungeons, outside of the four main divine beasts, are the ancient shrines, numerous small trials left for the Hero of the Wild by the Sheikah, 10,000 years prior to the game's events. 
Many are scattered across Hyrule, which lay dormant and inaccessible until Link activated the Great Plateau Tower with the Sheikah Slate, and many more lie deep underground, rising to the surface after a puzzle is solved. A Sheikah Shrine is an enclosed underground micro dungeon. Link must open them with a slate and descend via a platform. The shrines are built using the hyper-advanced technology of the Sheikah, constructed from resilient smooth stone and powered by a strange blue energy, the same energy which powers the Guardians, Divine Beasts and the Sheikah Slate itself. Each shrine houses a mummified Sheikah monk, who each built their own shrine as a personal trial for the hero in the name of the goddess Hylia, testing Link's intellect, agility and combat abilities. Completing a shrine's challenges will result in its monk bestowing a spirit orb upon Link, a token of his courage before fading away. So just like the Tower of the Gods, the shrines were constructed to test the courage of a potential hero, forcing him to prove himself in the name of a goddess. And just like the tower, the shrines and the Sheikah constructs in general feature this strange constellation-like pattern, mainly on walls and the stasis pod in which the monks meditate. The stars were important to the Sheikah. The room directly below the sanctum in Hyrule Castle, in which Link faces the Calamity Ganon, is known as the Astral Observatory, a great dome with the constellations of Hyrule's night sky etched on the walls. The Sheikah were a profoundly holy race, devoting their lives to servitude in the name of the goddess Hylia. Perhaps this obsession with the stars was a form of worship, a scientific study of the heavens. Either way, the same constellation patterns are found inside and on the exterior of the Tower of the Gods, which like the shrines was built to test a hero's courage. But these aren't the only connections between the ancient shrines and the tower. First off, the Tower of the Gods theme music is incredibly reminiscent of the ancient shrine dungeon theme from Breath of the Wild. And more importantly, unique amongst the Wind Waker's dungeons is the Tower of the Gods technology. It's packed with Beamos, energy beams, floating platforms, and notably, robots. A main focus of the dungeon is transporting statues, known as Servants of the Tower, into the central room of the lower part of the tower. Statues which are made of black stone with the ability to move and talk, powered by a strange blue energy. Even the dungeon's main boss, Godan, is a divine mechanical adjudicator designed to test challenges powered by this energy, found in a room illuminated by glowing blue symbols on the walls and floor, symbols closely resembling those surrounding the monks at the end of the shrines. When Godan powers on and disconnects from its pedestal in the walls, blue energy flows through it, signalling its activation. It's an automaton fueled by this energy. I don't have to point out the similarities here. The greatest accomplishment, and perhaps greatest flaw, of the ancient Sheikah was the creation of their mechanical wonders, the divine beasts and guardians. These take the form of robots built from the Sheikah's strange stone substance powered by a glowing blue energy. Robots which are used to protect Hyrule, defend important landmarks, and to test the hero in shrines. The connections between the Tower of the Gods and the ancient Sheikah are too strong to ignore. Both are trials for the hero, featuring futuristic technology powered by a blue energy, and both rise from deep below the ground, or sea, when they're required. So could the Sheikah themselves have been responsible for the tower's construction? Could Godan be a form of a sacred guardian? and the tower itself a precursor to the shrines. The King of Red Lions claims that the Tower of the Gods was constructed by the gods themselves, meaning that it, and everything within, is of divine origin. 
We know that, on the other hand, the Sheikah technology is likely man-made, the heart of which is a blue substance presumably created by the Sheikah to power their creations. There's a few solid theories on the origin of this blue energy and how the Sheikah harness it, but the one that likely holds the most ground is the idea that this energy isn't man-made, but the power of the gods themselves. This blue energy, which breathes life into the shrines, the guardians and the Sheikah slate, might be the pure, harnessed energy of the gods, making the Sheikah's names for their constructions all the more fitting. Divine beasts might actually be divine beasts, titans forged by mortals and fueled by gods. The only weapons able to harm the dark beast Ganon, the pure incarnation of hatred and malice, are sacred weapons, the holy bow of light, the master sword sword beams, and ancient arrows. This blue energy which we've seen before in places such as the chamber of sages, the master sword's pedestal, and the creation of the world itself, might be the energy of the gods. If the Sheikah's technology is in fact divine in origin, it further strengthens their connection to the Tower of the Gods, a divine trial. The shrines were built 10,000 years before Breath of the Wild, yet are perfectly designed to test this exact incarnation of Link, almost as if the Sheikah knew he would awaken a century after the Calamity. The Tower of the Gods, too, is a trial which guards the sunken Hyrule below, only necessary in the event that an aspiring hero appears after this flood, again requiring a form of foresight that the Hero of Winds would embark on his adventure. The Sheikah claimed to be blessed with the sight of the goddess Hylia, symbolised by the eye tattooed on their foreheads. This is their mind's eye, an idea central to Sheikah culture, symbolising a heightened sense of awareness. Even back as far as Ocarina of Time, the Sheikah have been connected with this ability to see the truth, and this idea of the mind's eye. The Sheikah shrines were constructed using the Sheikah's clairvoyance, their ability to see the future. The Tower of the Gods, a divine trial constructed prior to the Wind Waker, again seems to rely on foresight, that at some point it would be required by a hero to access the sunken Hyrule and defeat Ganondorf. Knowing all this, there's a possibility that's too good to ignore. During the Wind Waker, the Hero of Time is remembered and revered as a warrior of legend, a mythical figure respected by both common folk and deities alike. The Tower of the Gods could, in a way, be described as a test to find the Hero of Time's successor, an adventurer worthy of drawing the same Blade of Evil's Bane used centuries prior by the Boy Without a Fairy. During Ocarina of Time, the Sheikah are nearly extinct, with the only true Sheikah we see being Zelda's guardian, Impa. Their home village of Kakariko was open to Hylians during the fierce civil war prior to the game, and no Sheikah remain in the hamlet. But their secrets linger. The horrific Bottom of the Well and Shadow Temple are dark connections to the Sheikah's bloody history, dungeons into which the Hero of Time ventured. In the eyes of the Sheikah, one of the greatest feats of this legendary hero must have been the execution of the demon Bongo Bongo, an evil previously sealed in the well by Impa. This monster is one of the most difficult bosses in the game, with an extraordinary amount of health and powerful attacks. The true identity of Bongo Bongo is unknown, but his connections to the Sheikah tribe are obvious. He takes the form of a dark, muscular being hanging upside down with a large eye in place of his head and two floating hands. To defeat Bongo Bongo, Link must shoot his hands with arrows, revealing the boss's weak spots, just like Godan. The similarities between Bongo Bongo and Godan are obvious, but Tifto on Reddit pointed out something I hadn't thought of. What if, when creating a trial for the successor to the Hero of Time, the Sheikah built a mechanical reconstruction of Bongo Bongo, forcing the potential hero to repeat one of the Hero of Time's greatest conquests? Godan's boss room goes as far as to replicate the area in which Bongo Bongo is fought, a large circular platform surrounded by hazardous flooring. 
it's possible that, when designing a divine trial for the new hero, the Sheikah took inspiration from the legend of the Hero of Time, recreating the trial with the strongest connection to them. Godan might not only be a precursor to the Guardians and the Divine Beasts, but an artificial recreation of Bongo Bongo. Bongo Bongo is connected to darkness and shadow, representing the failure and shame of the Sheikah. But Godan, the Great Arbiter, is designed like the Sun, similar to ancient Incan sun masks symbolising the Sheikah's piety and redemption, a mechanical vessel of the God's will. Like with most things in the Zelda series, the Tower of the Gods and its connection to the Sheikah isn't set in stone, it's only hinted at. It's up to you to make up your own mind, whether you believe the tower was constructed by the Sheikah, the gods themselves, or someone else entirely. Let me know in the comments section below. And again, a huge shout out to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Check out nordvpn.com slash Zeltic for 75% off. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like, it really helps the channel out, or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.